All right, guys, as I mentioned in the previous video, we are gonna be working on my bench press. I think there's this misconception that's still out there that the bench press, there's not a lot of things involved, right? You just bring the bar down, push up, it's, it's that easy. No, you're wrong. Uh, we got a lot of things to say about the bench, and Dave, what are you gonna put me through today with this? I'm gonna have Joey go through a dynamic bench workout, plus some people call it a speed bench workout. I look at it a few different ways. You know, in the video that we did earlier, we talked a little bit about the technical aspect. I also look at it as a technique of training, technique reinforcement, technique development, because it's lighter weight, you can make the corrections and it's not so heavy that you have to be in a completely different mind place to be able to get it done. So a lot of the adjustments, if need be, will be made then, and then they can be reinforced during that time period. So when you're looking at that, the dynamic effort method, yes it's defined a lot of different ways but it should be utilized i'd rather have somebody do that go through a dynamic effort training session or a very light weight training session to help with technique and then potentially work up to a max you know because that way you can find technical weak points and physical mm -hmm. um i won't have you do that today that's kind of what i have people doing during the train your ass off thing i don't yeah. suggest doing it that yeah. way because it could be a little bit different but by the time we're done we should have a pretty good indication bench wise, so, you know, from that mm -hmm. specificity, what needs to be done to be able to bring the bench up and to dial in the technique as well. Okay. So uh, I always suggest everybody start with the bar. And now with the bar, you're not gonna apply maximum force. I don't want your shoulder blades flying off the bench. Yeah, you know, no. it's just, it's the first set. So just move it at whatever speed right, you cool. normally do. And what I'll do is I just, I'll watch your technique. Usually I try not to watch anybody do the bar because it frustrates me. Cause this is when you'll see most of the shit. It's really, really bad. <clears throat> go ahead and keep going now some of the things that i look at while he's pressing i'm looking at where the elbow position is going to be with the bench pad if his elbows are going lower than the pad i want to bring it up a little bit <laughs> that way i can shorten the range of motion and the movement of the shoulder capsule i'm also looking to see i'm not looking so much with the leg drive because he's not doing a lot there now i'm going to make sure the grip is even which and make sure the feet are kind of even just body position i want to make sure it's all where it needs to be and then at the top there's not over pressing of the barbell and rack height and stuff like that so there's a lot of things being looked at at one time to try to narrow down where i need to look more in each set going up does that feel all right yeah if, I, uh, if it feels a little weird with the bar then you just repeat yeah right? no i felt felt good we'll go a quarter per side cool. um you only use quarters here well yeah <laughs> if the weight gets heavy enough you got to kind of default to the old <laughs> old way but by using the quarters you know for the intermediate lifters and taking it makes them take smaller jumps yeah. there's more work capacity being developed as you work up there's more sets there's more technical reps compared to a plate 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 you know like people would do you you lose a lot of work is there ever a time here where there is no method to the madness not really. <laughs> <laughs> that was a trick question. I'm also looking to see how he takes the bar out where he took it out while he scraped the J cups on the way out. And I'm looking at the lat engagement to make sure it's stable and it's stable. And as the weight goes up, I'll start looking more at the legs, start looking more at the bracing. Uh, one thing that you can see, and it may change, is the barbell is a little bit behind his forearm. So it's not stacked over the elbow where it needs to be. <clears throat> so it's, it's another reason to do a lot of warm up sets if you're coaching an athlete or if you're working with somebody because there's a lot of things that you're gonna see that I'm making mental notes right. of. Some of these things will just go away when the weight gets heavier, mm -hmm. right? Cause it's light, you yeah. know, so, and, and you, most of these things you already know, it probably gets tightened up mm -hmm. as the weight gets heavier. But once we get to like 135, that old rule comes into play of treat light weights like they're heavy, heavy yeah. and heavy weights like they're light. Yep. So, cause then that's where the technique and everything starts to come in with yeah. that. Yeah, and just disclaimer for me with history, I don't really bench press much. I use utilize the bench to help any way I can with my overhead press for mm -hmm. strongman. So benching variations are gonna be a lot of close grip, more like incline type stuff, uh, but that that's it. So like when it comes to my grip, my grip is typically a lot more narrow than when you see guys going wider. Um, just because, I, like I said, I try to transfer that specifically to strongman. So I do have this weird goal at some point in my life to just hit a 500 pound raw bench. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like to do that, I'm gonna have to really understand the technique, you know, figure out what works best for my setup, my body type, et cetera. So 
this is kind of like foreshadowing down the road uh, that I can rewatch this video and kind of even for myself, but as coaching too, like what's his thought process as a coach? Like how is he analyzing athletes? Uh, Cause the main thing is there's systems here and we can take those systems and utilize them. So it's, it's a lot that I'm learning right now. Okay, the, the, the note that he just made about using it for strong man in the close grip, that's important to know because that's gonna change the elbow position to in relation to the bench pad okay. as we move forward because the closer grip is going to have more shoulder rotation yeah. which is fine it that tells me i'm not going to move your grip out because i do okay. agree that the closer grip is going to have greater transference okay. to the strong man than what the wider grip is yeah. going to be but I, we're still going to want to get a little for higher sure, because there's sure. too much shoulder rotation on that but it also throws in other things too of what your accessory exercises can be okay. to be able to carry over that yeah may end up being the second movement. We'll see how things progress right. here. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> from that, so let's throw another plate on. So again, for, for the people watching, when he takes it out, you're gonna see he pulls the bar out, kind of like, hold on, kind of like a dumbbell pullover. So he's pulling it out. You can see that because it's scraping the, the J cup. So most of my J cups in here, the paint's like scraped off of that because of that. What you don't want to do is to press you don't want to go boom this way back and hit and you don't want to go up either it should be more of a pull out type of thing and that is to keep the lats engaged see now i'm just seeing that how tight his legs and his abdominals are and it can be tighter again it can be because it's just 135 but go ahead and rack it <clears throat> We're going to stay there because the it, 135 for him is a good enough light weight to be able to start working on a lot right. of these things to be able to get it so when i come to try to i should not be able to move your knees either in or out yeah right? you moved them. yeah so and some of us just not paying attention but if it's ha let's say it doesn't happen on your heavy weights but you just reinforced it being loose uh -huh. here you see what i'm yeah, saying so what when you're, you're talking about technique again with your lacrosse players how often do you want to see them reinforce bad habits yeah, none. You know, yeah. so granted, if it's 95 or the bar, you don't want to focus on mm -hmm. that too much. But on these, you want to focus on that. And then when he's pulling the bar out, you're seeing that there's, a, you know, it's, it's, there's instability. It's again because it's light. You know, so as it gets heavier, that will go away when he's pulling it out. But you are stopping and holding before you lower, which okay. is good because okay. a lot of people will come out and then you it's know just fall down through that. Yeah. So do this again. You don't need to do a lot. Just three, five, maybe, and then focus on your leg. Just try to push your feet into the ground as hard as you can okay. and we'll see what happens there key thing is I shouldn't be able to move because see if I go this way your whole body will twist yeah. like, let's try to push through your toes now that's a little bit better um, move your feet forward some now try to push through your toes I right, see now I can't twist you yeah. take your feet back again where they where you normally feel comfortable yeah. See how that twist is way smart? Yeah. Bring it just out a little bit. What we're looking for is this everything to be stable so it doesn't move. Now, whatever you do with your feet, I don't care. You can just try to push them in the floor. You can try to drive your toes through the front. As long as it keeps this here, I'm not so worried about this movement. This is what we're trying to yeah. not have move. Huh. All right. I've really never paid attention to that as much as I just did, to be honest with okay. you. Usually, I always used to get my feet back here. And that's fine. That's fine, and that that works for a lot of people. Now, if you can do that and not have that turn, though, right? yeah, Does that feel weaker. Okay. Yes, because if that's turning, if I'm able to twist and turn that with just that little bit of pressure, yeah. you know, you're losing that force coming back through there and tightness. And as I can well. already tell this this is going to help push me back on that leg drive, yes. which is what everybody talks about. Yes. Wow. Okay. Good. So now lock the legs. Good. Just do a couple. All right. Good, now hold it at the top. Now I want you to take your rib cage and bring it up towards me, like your sternum higher. Now do a couple in that position, get the legs tight. Up, one. Good, now if you do, do one more rep, just kind of relax just a little bit. Okay, now get tight again. Bring your sternum rib cage up. Watch where his elbows are when he goes down now. Go down in relation to the bench and up, good, back. And so where we're at, it's already, it's come up from where he started from. It felt a lot better. Yeah, and we haven't done anything with yeah lats or any of that at this point. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like a lot of times people talk about like leg drive, 
you should be feeling like you're pushing yourself back on the bench. And to be honest with you, I never really felt that way, but I think it's because adjusting my feet positioning to actually utilize the force of my legs properly, now it's making me feel that. Yes, so I mean, the goal is you want the skin, <clears throat> Jay and Blakely showed this one time, I always I thought it was a great cue. See how my skin moves? Yeah. You want your back skin on the bench to do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Right, <laughs> so. Okay, that's yeah, good, that's really good. Learning, we're learning. But that, what you're saying, that cleared up the issue with, with what had happened on the last one. Yes. What, what was the issue I was having? What, with the last one? Yeah. The legs. Oh, okay. The legs. Just the movement of the legs. Just turning all that, put your body in position that sets the torso for me to start saying, now let's get your ribs bigger. Okay. Right, like get your ribs bigger, get your torso, upper yeah. body bigger, that's gonna shorten the stroke too. Okay. But it's also gonna tighten your upper body, yeah. which is gonna allow more force to go into the pad and more I, stability. Key word is force. I felt like I had more force to drive yes. the bar. Yes, now I can try to, without doing any of that, I can just try to go straight to ribs up, ribs up, ribs up, and it's not gonna make that much difference mm. because it's gonna, it's yeah. still gonna be moving too much. You're not gonna be in a position that's gonna allow that to open up the way it needs to open up unless this is all braced. So just from a coaching perspective, a question I have is like, do you always go from like ground up? Is that what you look at or does it not necessarily matter? On the bench, I look at everything, okay. right? Because if, if, if the grip's uneven, if this isn't stable, there could be some things which you didn't have that are just wrapped around the fact of not squeezing the bar hard. Yeah. You know, things like that, that I want to, that's a low hanging fruit I want to uh -huh. take care of. But once those really, really obvious things are taken care of, then it, yeah, I'm gonna go over okay. my feet okay. and the legs gotcha. and then move through. Cool. All right, so we'll go to, now the question then becomes if we're gonna get into dynamic work, how much weight to use for speed work? So there's flat waves. You know, if you look at conjugate where the same weight will be used all the time, maybe add chains or bands and so forth. So it never changes. The whole time I was at Westside, it rarely ever changed. The weight was the same. It was just the other shit that changed mm -hmm. around that. Or you can have waves, you know, three week right. waves. And some people may say 50%, 60%, 70, 55. They're all over the place, right? So what we're gonna do is the easiest way I found with people that don't know what percent to use is we're gonna find a weight that's probably around 40% which we're not even close to being there yet. That's the next jump we're gonna take is gonna be like 200 pounds. That might be kind of getting there. Mm -hmm. I want you to try to push with as, max, as much force as you can. So everything's gonna be docked down, everything's gonna be tight, then try to move it as fast as you fast can. can. Now, if it feels like, no, this is still way too stupid light, then don't. But what we want, what, what I'm looking for is we're gonna make small jumps after that because your max bench is, what is it now? Somewhere between 450 and 500. So it's 450 and 500. So it's probably gonna be a set after this one. But what, it, actually we'll still do it with this one. Okay. Because what might happen on this one is it's gonna look like shit, nice. right? Because everything's just gonna, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be too light, right? Yeah, yeah. But what I want the people to see is we're gonna make smaller jumps as we move up. So we're not gonna use the same weight for all speed work. We're gonna add a little weight each set, right? And then what we're gonna find out, this is too light, this is too light, this is too light, this looks good. Mm -hmm. Technically sound, it's moving with good speed. Mm -hmm. Then we keep working up, we keep working up, we keep working up, oh, this now is starting to break down, it's too slow. Mm -hmm. And then what we're left with is a percent range, which could be your three week wave okay. broke down right there, gotcha. based upon you. Now yeah. we don't have to use the Tendo unit. We don't have to use any measuring device. We don't have to look at this book or look at this book. Yeah. This is this is you. This mm -hmm. is where you're applying the most force. Right, cool. This is like 195. <clears throat> so feet tight. Good. Ribs up, ribs up, ribs up. Higher, 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 higher. There. Good. Now, three. Up fast. Boom. Up fast. You got to go faster than that. I know you're faster than that. There you go. Faster. Good. There you go. Good. Well, that feels weird. <laughs> okay. So, am I used to moving that fast? Yeah, I'm going to have you do that again because <laughs> that wasn't what I was looking no. for. The first one was a little too. I want to see boom, boom, I'm boom. Too, I'm too slow. Yes. That, that. But he said the same thing last time with squats. Yes. I'm too controlled. Yeah, so we're looking for that explosiveness. Keep in <laughs> mind too, when you're talking about, here's another aspect when it comes to technical acuity learning technique. When you teach the kids with lacrosse, you first show them, right? Yeah. So they can see it. Some people are visual learners, some people are audio learners, and then they're gonna go through at a slower speed. As they 
begin to master the movement, then you're going to move them fa faster speeds, faster, yeah. right? To see if they can still maintain yep, yep. that technique, right? <clears throat> now, if they can't, you take them back down to that slower speed, mm -hmm. right? Then you're going to move them at that faster speed, fatigued. Yeah. You know, so it may be sometimes you may have them do, you know, gassers or whatever it's mm -hmm. going to be, and then just bring them back. Hey, guys, real quick. Then they just do some technique work. Yep. Can they still do this do with it, yeah. technique as they're gassed? Yep. Right, that's a higher level. Mm -hmm. Then the higher level is now can they do this under technique while they're gassed and there's only a couple minutes left in the game and they're down. Mm -hmm. Gassed with mm -hmm. stress, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a whole process, right? Yeah, so yeah. your bench form is not gonna be the issue. Now, can your bench form be maintained with speed? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. that's part of that skill acquisition process. Yep. It's still, again, again, going back to like with other sports, there's a skill acquisition process that leads to that mastery. You know, the mastery is when they can do it without even thinking. It's mm -hmm. just completely automatic, and the stress doesn't bother them. The fatigue doesn't bother yeah, them. Yeah, right. Not Michael Jordan winning that, just you know, it, yeah. Yeah, nothing yeah. bothers them. That's the highest level, uh -huh. right? But with a lot of lifters, they're not even on the path to try to obtain that. Huh. Yeah. They just do the same thing over and over. So this one here, try to press all, right. all three. Good. Hold. Ribs, ribs, ribs. Higher, higher. There. Go. Hit it. Up. Good. Hit it. Good. Hit. Good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that might be. Because that didn't get like substantially faster, right? No. So the, the, I had you repeat it because yeah. the last set could have just been like a fluke. Yeah, you yeah. didn't know what you were doing. So what I'll do is I mark the plate. <laughs> You know, as we move up, because this could be if you wanted to run a three week conjugate wave or dynamic effort wave, 195 may be week one. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. As, as we keep going up, at some point in time, that speed is going to slow down. Uh -huh. And then that will be so I don't know what percentage yeah. this is. 195 off of, say, 455, that's under 50%. Under, under, yeah, yeah. You know, so you would be, that, I don't know what the math is on that, say it's 45%, yeah. that may be week one with that. Okay. It also may be you just don't have, you're not connecting the dots to it, hmm. to where it could be a different thing where you would use this weight for a couple of weeks, then when it just feels like you can throw yeah. it through the ceiling, you'll be done with it and go to the next one. Let's try to get the ribs set before you pull out. Okay. So really, really high, keeping the ass down, feet, good. Ribs up, ribs up. There, go, fast, hit it, faster, up, good, there you go, up, good, all right, good, good, legs tight, ribs up, so your legs are good, so just pull out, so out, tight, ribs up, ribs up, no, you gotta do better than that, rib cage up, right there, yeah, I'll help you, go ahead and pull it out again, so ready, out, get this high, 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 there, good, now drop it faster, hit it, there you go, down up, Good. Down up. Good. There. Whoa. Cool. So that's 245. So now we're talking. <sighs> I'm. I was been just being too slow, dude. Too slow. Gotta be fast. Gotta be explosive. It's four weeks or five week phases with it. Okay. And cycle the same thing we're doing here. And during those those three, four, or five weeks, it's the same weight, or how do you do? How do you manage the load? you can do it however you want right where when for you i i like to have people cycle it okay now if they're, if they're total beginners i'll keep it the same okay I, I will keep it the weight exactly the same until the technical mastery comes in mm -hmm. then we can talk later at the end about the chains and bands then i may put chains on it because it's only going to change it at the top it's not going to change it at the bottom okay. and then i may wave them into bands after that maybe maybe not more likely I'm going to increase the weight, mm -hmm. go straight weight again, and then three weeks there, and then put potentially the chains. Okay. Gotcha. If I had to tell somebody what to do, yeah. if they're in here, I'm just going to adjust based upon how they look that day. Okay. Yeah, so this up, ribs up, ribs up, good. Drop fast. Hit it. Good. You got to hit it fast. Hit it. Good. Hit it. Good. Yep. Do you have wrist wraps? I do.
And so what he's doing is his, his wrist is the barbell. His wrist is cocking back so the barbell is away from the forearm. I'm having him wrist just to be able to keep that in line with the forearm so it's not back behind. Let hold, get this high, 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 good. Drop, press fast. Up, 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 up. down, up, up. Good, okay. Now, you, you see there and you felt it there. No matter what you could do, you're not going to be able to press that as fast That's, as with the last yeah, weight press. Right, yeah. so this is 285. So that's out of your, for, if I'm watching this, I'd say that's out of your dynamic okay. range, right? So if we go back, that very first weight that I marked here, that was 195. That was probably too light because I wasn't cueing you to lower faster. Faster, yeah. Right? So your wave's going to be <clears throat> basically after that, we did 225 because we had the diamond the five. So 225 to this here is 245, 255, 265. So 225 to 265 is your range yeah. for that explosive power development based upon how you felt what we saw with bar speed. Okay. Not using any devices or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So your question was then what do I do with that, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can break that up over three weeks and that's a three week wave where that's what you would cycle through. And then that would be your speed work. What do you do after the three weeks? You can either cycle it through again, right? Or you can cycle into, I like to have people go to chains after that because the chains don't change the weight at the bottom, only at the top, you're gonna to be stronger at the top. Mm -hmm. So if it's just a one or two, probably for you two chains per side, at the, at the top it might be 40, 50 pounds, because half of it's got, it's all got to come off at the bottom. Yeah. If this chain's still hanging on the bar while you're at the bottom, then you may as well have more weight on the bar, mm -hmm. where that would throw it out of that range. So you went off at the bottom. So I would use the same weight, but just put two chains per side, cycle through that, trying to match that speed. Okay. Then that's got six weeks there. At that point in time though, as we were discussing, I would think more on how to cycle it in on three week waves and then moving off the movement to some overhead press or something that's gonna fit your strongman, okay. if that's what your aspirations yeah. are, yeah. right? And then go back, so you'd have a, you would basically cycle a vertical press with a horizontal press, back to the vertical press. Now, are the percentages gonna be the same with the vertical press? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I would say just do the same thing. Same thing. Cause yeah. you still got a training session out of it. We're gonna go down and hit mid position you know, so the 245 for a few more sets, just so you get an idea to drop a little okay. bit faster. Okay. Kind of like you said, the, the main point during those other weeks is to maintain bar speed as it would be right now. So when we add the chains or we add the band, we want to keep Well, that. the chains definitely you should be able to. Okay. Now, if you add the band, there's a little caveat with that. You got to figure out how much tension the band has at the bottom. Okay. So say you have a mini band that's choked on there. It might have 30 or 40 pounds at the bottom that has to come off the bar okay right so yes you can go into the bands but you can't just throw it on yeah without taking the weight off that's still okay. going to be there okay all right so here's just reinforcing the triples focus just on the technical things because this is that middle of that so the ribs are the big one so squeeze good now get this up high high there see i should you shouldn't i should not be able to move you go hit it down up hit it good up, hit it, good. I, I've just, the way I've been benching for so long has been a really controlled eccentric mm -hmm. and I've never explode up. Yeah. Like I, I'm moving weight up like way slower, which shows me I think I'm, I'm strong because I'm doing it that way, but I'm not, like I'm not using a lot of force. Okay, when you miss your bench, where do you normally miss it? Uh, I'll probably get off a couple inches from the chest like right around from here to here. All right, so hold your arms right where you miss it, typically right around there. Right okay, around. so right there is where you normally miss, right? Okay, go ahead and lie down there, but don't grab the bar. Just gonna show you something here. So just put your hands where you would normally miss. Okay, so let's say, just as a visual, we're gonna test this. So we're gonna say probably a little bit higher than a three board. So, Mm -hmm. 
So right about there. So about a four board. So here's what I want you to think about. If this is where that mitt sticking point is, drop your arms back down to the ground, right back down to the bottom, like when you're benching. So, so the bar's on your chest, take the bar to your chest here. Now, if you move your hands up slow, like you normally press and then it hit that board, what's going to happen if I'm holding this and not letting you push? Just gonna, you're, you're just going to get stuck, yeah. right? Now, what if you brought your hands back down, so you had a bar in your air, and now you push it into this board as hard I'm as you drive can. Drive it, yeah. Okay, now what's going to happen? Yeah. This is going to get absorbed, yeah. right? You, you're, you, either if you're super, super fast, you'll break through the board. Yeah. More than likely, it's going to go, so you're going to bump me up. So where's that sticking point again? It was right about here, right? So now if you went into that a little bit faster, here's there. your sticking point. Yeah. Which is a lot easier to develop that sticking point because that's a lockout. Yeah. Then a midpoint sticking point, which is one of the hardest yeah. to develop. That makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> so that's that's that force development. Same thing with if it's an overhead or if it's a log, where's that sticking point at? What if you were able to go into it just a little bit yeah. faster? But you're telling me things like, well, I always normally press at this phase. Yeah. You know, which means you're always normally pressing into that at that same speed. And and, and you know what's interesting too is I'm a fairly decent overhead presser, and the reason I think now is because I use a lot more force in the overhead press. Like I'm using my leg drive, yeah. I'm doing the jerk, but the bench press, I don't do that at all. Yes. Like I, I can 100% say when I do this, the bench press, I come down super slow eccentric. And then as I come up, it's just like, like that. Like, so yes. there's no, there's no force involved with it. Yes, yes. So <laughs> we'll do another yeah, set yeah. here. Okay, but you gotta get this chest up high. Yeah. Hi, hi, hi. There you go. Good. Hit it. There you go. Good. Down up. Fast. Good. 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 There you go. I feel like my best set. Yeah. Just nuts. Alright, same thing here. Good. Hold. Ribs. Ribs. There. Go. Fast. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Good. <clears throat> Alright, so if we're going through what I would call a conjugate training session, then I'm, I'm using that first exercise. And if it's somebody that's out here training, I'm watching the first exercise to see what, what the weak point is, what's off, what's going on. So yeah. I want the second thing to be either something that's going to address that weak point or with a bench, it's tricep would normally fall in there. Yours is just that force development, mm -hmm. just getting in your head for that maximum force. Yeah, yeah. So the second exercise I would have you actually do would be med ball throws, rebounders, okay. just to get used to, yeah, yeah. boom, hitting off of that bottom, uh -huh. you know, or it could be, I, I don't like things like, you could do um, plyometric push-ups and stuff like that, but I want more, you know, the, the fatigue rate, that's more of an eccentric okay. than what some of the other things will be. So I, what, I would put that in immediately, right? Because what we don't know is, at this point is, is this just a neural thing? Mm -hmm. That you have that explosive strength component, you just haven't put one and one together to really make it fit. Yeah. And it could definitely be that. We're one more bench session, dynamic session, and it's there. Mm -hmm. I'm tending to think it probably is okay. that. So it's more a, um, neuro efficiency just yeah. a reconnection type of thing where putting that in there will help to reconnect that now if it's not that right and that i mean this is glaring so it's th this is for sure yeah if, if it wasn't that and if it was say something tricep related then that movement for the tricep would go in there if it was something stability related you just you could never get it tight or stable mm -hmm. at the top or then it would be something lat related or no matter what you couldn't get that rib cage to pop up it may also be there again something lat related mm -hmm. and it's going to be that second it's going to be that next exercise of that day yeah right and then during the second training session of that week that would be for push or however the program's developed i would also have it in there Okay. So then by the next time the speed bench comes back through, we'll see if there's a difference or not, yeah. right? And if that difference is profound, you know, like, holy shit, now every rep, boom, 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 you're just hitting yeah. it, then that was not a muscular weak point, okay. which this 
I'm already concerned, but let's let's say it is that shoulder, right? Let's say you're taking it out, you just can't get it stable, or the rib, I'll go with the ribs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say it's the ribs, you just cannot keep the ribs up. Uh -huh. Then that second movement would be something to be able to, like a low row, something with a handle that's gonna force you to, to do that. Okay. That would go second, you know, just for higher repetitions, just to reinforce what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Then it would go in that next training session during the week. Then on that next bench session, if boom, every single one of those, it sticks and it's there then it's not strength of the upper back. Yeah. Where some people, you know, like I said, it can either be technical, physical, or mental. I wanna go after the technical part, low hanging fruit, the easiest thing to do, see if it's that, throw it in there. It's fixed yeah. the next time you come in. Because sooner or later, there is going to be a glaring muscular weakness that's mm -hmm. gonna take some type of phasic structure to, to build up. Say if it's, at first I was thinking because this was falling back a little bit, yeah. it'd be something like a JM press that would have to be second okay. to be able to, to, you know, have to take the shoulder rotation out, yeah. keep more tricep extension in. And then that discussion would be, okay, how are you going to wave in a JM press to be able to build that strength up mm -hmm. over a three or five week period of time? Problem is that would take three to five weeks to be able to know the result of that. Right? Yeah. So, or if it was that same issue here, then we're gonna work on something to be able to neurally connect that, see if it hits in that first week, because mm -hmm. it, it can be fixed in a week. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a lot of people will see something and say, oh, you just need stronger shoulders. And then you're gonna start doing stronger mm -hmm. shoulder work. It could be your shoulders just aren't firing the way they're supposed yeah, to yeah. be because you just aren't connecting it. So they do the, the same, the, the, the strength work, to build that up over five weeks and then the shit's still there. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, it took you five weeks to figure out if this is gonna work, then it didn't work. Meanwhile, you could have done this to rule it all out, which still yeah. may end up having to be, Yeah. that you understand what I'm saying? No, I, I get you. My, my thing too, like a question is like, so if I'm doing say accessory work where I'm doing a, uh, like a secondary lift, should I always be trying to put the max force production into those lifts as well? No. Okay. No, for you, yes. Now. Well, yes. for me, now. Yes. Yeah, yes. That's what I mean. Like. But no, like, okay. no. Once you get off that dynamic work, I would it's take not, some of okay, that it's out. Not like that. But it, it will happen, though. Okay. I mean, because you're going to do certain movements, you're going to get a few reps in. You're gonna, it's just yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. That's cool. But that intent isn't going to really okay. be, All right. you know, for that.